Get in the wagon, loser. We're going back in time. All of these albums have something to do with history and extreme metal. So buckle up, kiddos. You're about to get a lesson you've never had. Nile, the underworld awaits us all. When I first learned about what Niall was doing as a kid, I went nuts, dude. As a young student learning about world history and ancient civilizations, I was awestruck by the social complexities and technology of ancient Egypt. Throw in some brutal extreme death metal and we are all aboard, baby. George Colias and Carl Sanders have taken their newest members under their wing, showed them just how high the pyramids reach, and man, did these guys step up into their respective roles just flawlessly. This album tests the musical technicality of each and every member, showcasing mind-boggling riffs and rhythms that the band is just known for. This album is more than just a collection of fast-paced riffs, technical wizardry, and grooving slams. It's a journey into the heart of darkness. Niall has once again proven why they are the undisputed pharaohs of death metal. If this album doesn't make our best of the you know month list, the gods will surely smite us. Kicking it off with Brodequin, brutalizing from Knoxville. This Tennessee-based death metal band was formed in 1998 by brothers Mike and Jamie Bailey. The group has a discography of four albums and two EPs, and with their latest record, Harbinger of Woe, hitting the scene on March 22nd, a nearly 20-year follow-up to Methods of Execution in 2004, it was pretty goddamn sick. Named after a medieval torture device, this device itself secures a victim to the bench in a sitting position with their bare legs sandwiched between a set of three strong, narrow vertical boards. Outside each leg and in between, the lot are tightly bound together with some strong rope. Wedges of wood are introduced into any available gaps and yeah, put two and two together with a mallet. It's pretty brutal. The band's lyrics delve into graphic themes of dismemberment, torture, and murder, sure, but with a unique historical twist. That's why it's on this list. Harbinger of Woe is easily one of the best death metal albums of 2024 so far. If you love brutal, unrelenting death metal, it's tough to go wrong with this record, man. Absolutely killer band. Seth La France de Mordi. Sure. Forget the romanticized ideals of liberté, égalité, fraternité. Seth delves into the darker underbelly of the French Revolution, exploring themes of defiance, authoritarianism, and mob mentality. Formed in 1998, Seth has been a cornerstone of the French black metal scene for over two decades. Their latest offering isn't a mere history lesson, it's a declaration of war. La France de Modes is a call to arms urging listeners to question authority and the status quo. Expect oral brutality laced with icy melodies, characteristic of the French black metal sound. If you are looking for a black metal album that challenges historical narratives and isn't afraid to confront the darker aspects of humanity, get on this one. Flesh God Apocalypse, an absolutely killer symphonic death metal band. One of the best, actually, in my opinion. Hailing from Italy and formed in 2007, the band has released five incredible records, and they're currently signed to Nuclear Blast, which is well-deserved. The reason why I included this band is their third album, Labyrinth, which is an awesome record with a Greek historical twist. Maria, 
In Greek mythology, the labyrinth was an elaborate and confusing structure designed and built by the legendary artificer Daedalus for King Minos of Crete at Knossos. <laughs> It's a function that was made to hold the Minotaur, essentially, and the monster, eventually in the story, was killed by the hero Theseus. The labyrinth as a record feels incredibly cohesive with massive orchestral elements that make the album feel cinematic as fuck in scope. Their neoclassical death metal feel with this historical subject matter is nothing short of extraordinary. I love this album even more than I remember, man. If you haven't heard it in a while, go back and revisit it. Melichech emissaries. Whenever you pick the Assyrians in your next strategy, your 4X game that you're playing, this band's music should be playing in the background. This band is currently working on their seventh album and they're launching a crowdfunding campaign. Check out their website to help support them and for more details. This is one of the first extreme metal bands from Jerusalem to be signed to a label, which is quite a remarkable historical fact in itself. If you're seeking ancient demonic wisdom from Mesopotamia, Stick this album in your ears and prepare to become a djinn. Melichech isn't just about their sound. The music is a portal to a bygone era. Their lyrics delve into Sumerian and Akkadian mythology, breathing life into forgotten deities and epic tales. Whether you're a metalhead or a history buff, Melichech offers a unique and captivating experience. XDO is a Canadian death metal band that was formed in Montreal, Quebec. The band is a side project, for those of you who don't know, of the Cataclysm frontman. And it's based in history of the Roman Empire, which is pretty sick. This is the first band to call themselves Roman Legion Melodic Death Metal, and the band wears modified Roman Legion uniforms during live performances, which is kind of badass. All of their albums are absolutely on theme, but one I really wanted to draw attention to was The Immortal Wars from 2017. This album fucking rules, dude. The record in its entirety covers the Punic Wars, which is a series of wars between 264 and 146 BC between the Roman Republic and ancient Carthage. There were three wars in total in that time period that stretched across both land and sea and involved over 40 years of warfare. Pretty badass, right? Well, the band is just incredibly badass, unique, and a ton of fun, and it captures the story so awesome. Absolutely check them out if you've missed them for whatever reason. One of the best on this list, bro, 1914, where fear and weapons meet. So good, man. Much like Niall, this band has taken their historical flair and made it a very integral part of their act. They are often seen in World War I era combat garb, and their albums as a whole tell the tale of the first all-consuming conflict in the early 20th century. Their latest offering, Where Fear and Weapons Meet, isn't just merely a glorification of conflict, it's a brutal and unflinching portrayal of the horror and tragedy of the first global war. Imagine the crushing weight of black and death metal 
fused with the mournful melodies of doom. This is the soundscape that 1914 creates. It's a testament to the power of music to evoke emotions and preserve history. If you're looking for an extreme metal album that delivers both musical brilliance and historical depth, then Where Fear and Weapons Meet is essential listening. It's a powerful reminder of the devastating consequences of war, a fitting eulogy for the millions who perished in the trenches and field hospitals during that gruesome conflict. All right, this one's a bit unconventional, but it does apply. Gore Guts. While the band itself is not really based in historical concepts, the record Colored Sands is not only one of the best death metal records ever written, it's actually rooted in Tibetan history and ideals. Released back in 2013, the band wanted to do something like they did with Obscura in the sense that they wanted to invent a new musical language, which is kind of badass. The album is inspired by a Tibetan sand mandala, which is a symbol made of colored sand that is ritualistically destroyed once it's been constructed. In reading various online interviews about the record, I kind of thought it was fascinating how purposeful Gorguts wrote Colored Sands. The band expressed being inspired by Tibet as like the canvas for music, which the first four songs of the record discuss the splendors of the country, the culture, the topography, and also the geography. The last four tracks refer to the country being invaded, people protesting through immolation, getting killed while trying to escape. It's just an absolutely brilliant death metal record that people honestly really need to keep talking about. Yup, let's go. <laughs> Anytime this album comes on, I just want to like punch through a wall. Dude, dude this is <laughs> such a fucking awesome record. Now you're going to restart it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's worth it though. This 1992 album isn't just brutal. It's a musical journey through the horrors of the Fourth Crusade, a Christian military campaign in the 13th century that wreaked havoc on the Byzantine Empire in an effort to retake the city of Jerusalem. Not the first time we mentioned that city in this little video here. Gone are the breakneck tempos of their grind era. This album employs a slower, doomier approach, perfectly capturing the oppressive atmosphere of the siege of Constantinople. Crushing riffs in Carl Willett's signature guttural vocals paint a picture of religious fanaticism and torture of heretics. This album isn't just a historical retelling, it's a scathing indictment of war's brutality. These songs are testament to Bolt, Thrower, to Bolt Thrower's ability to blend musical aggression with social commentary. The Fourth Crusade is a landmark release in death metal history. It's a testament to the power of Bolt Thrower's music to leave people Hundreds of years in the future, pondering the events of the past. Chthonic is a pioneering Taiwanese heavy metal band formed in Taipei in 1995, often hailed as the Black Sabbath of Asia. I don't know why, I don't think that fits, but whatever. What? The group blends the raw energy of metal with the soul of traditional Taiwanese music, incorporating instruments like the air hu, drawing inspiration from ancient myths and historical tragedies. Chthonic aims to illuminate Taiwan's rich cultural heritage on the global stage.
My personal favorite album of theirs is their sixth studio record, Takasago Army, released in 2011. The title is a reference to the Takasago volunteers and the Imperial Japanese Army, recruited from the Taiwanese Aboriginal tribes during World War II. Beyond their music, the band members are vocal advocates for Taiwanese independence and human rights. The frontman, Freddie Lim, a former Amnesty International chairman, actually brought their message to the political forefront when he was elected to Taiwanese legislature in 2016. All this in a metal band, pretty sick if you ask me. With a discography spanning eight freaking albums, including their latest release, Battlefields of Asura in 2018, which was pretty damn good, Kathonic continues to be a highly powerful force in both music and activism. What are some of your favorite historical extreme metal records? We probably missed some. Thumbs up the video. Go with the gods, Forge Mates. The rope tightens around the protocol.